how do you know you are Mag Mary Magdalene? Good question. <laughs> it's a good question because a lot of the time, especially over the last five years, perhaps not as much now, mm. um, but over that time I've often wandered around trying to convince myself that I don't know that I am. <laughs> That, that it's still in question inside of me, that I have to sort it out and figure it out. But the truth is that I know that I am. And the reason that I've, ha that I've been in that state for such a long time of wanting to question it and wanting to doubt it, inside, what I already feel inside of myself, is because, largely because of how the world views that, me saying that and me living that. Obviously, a lot of people think that I'm, my sanity is in question, really, by saying that. Or they think that I'm in a cult and that I'm somehow being hypnotised or mind-controlled or something weird is going on with me where I'm not in control of myself or my will or my ideas. And that's a pretty yucky feeling to have others feel about you and to feel coming from other people. And I haven't wanted to really be myself fully because I felt that that's a yucky thing to feel and I didn't want to experience that coming from others. It's also because there's a, like a large majority of, or a large number of people on the planet are Christians and they have a lot of ideas about who Jesus should be and who I am and the fact that me saying that I'm Mary Magdalene and I'm the wife of Jesus and Jesus actually didn't die to save your sins and actually a lot of what you believe to be Christian truth is not actually true. Mm. That has always been pretty scary for me. I've felt, like, I've felt like being open and honest and resolving and saying I've resolved this within myself would mean that people would attack us and vilify us and call us, you know sacrilegious and all of these kinds of things. Mm. So there's another avoidance of me wanting to avoid the disapproval of other people. And also in, in New Age philosophies, there's a lot of people who believe that, you know, Mary Magdalene is the divine feminine and she's in everyone and, and many women believe they are Mary Magdalene. And I've had a lot of fear of confronting those women emotionally not that I've ever gone and told mm. them that they're wrong or sought out confrontation with them but just me saying these things publicly does cause women to contact me and tell me that I'm not or that we all are or that I'm wrong and um, yeah and I've I have a lot of feelings still of feeling that I'm inadequate in some way actually that I should be better <laughs> because of the projections of others probably a feeling inside of myself that I feel like I actually have been very much more connected to God and reflected a lot more of God's truth and God's love in my life before I came back to earth and so there's a big feeling inside of me that I'm not good enough which is an error it's totally not the truth from God's perspective but because I do have that feeling mm. then it makes me want to hide from others and not say who I am and not be just completely frank and honest and exposed. So that's a lot of background, I suppose, yeah. to this question, which is how I know. Yeah. Because for a long time I've probably appeared as if I don't know and I was very much invested in people having that opinion because it helped me avoid them having to confront all of their preconceptions about me or all of all of their feelings towards me being definite, I wanted to avoid. And that's, also, that's, that's me living in fear, and that didn't have very good results. Because <laughs> you got it anyway? Because yeah, I got it anyway in some cases. I also got other yucky projections which yeah. were, oh, that Mary, she's a bit wishy-washy, not really sure. And, and so then people, I've received projections that AJ is controlling me, which isn't the truth, or that I'm not very bright or... <laughs> <laughs> Those kinds of things. So, you know, I was being shown that I wasn't really in a state of love about this yeah. this situation. You know, I was I was living in fear and avoiding just being really clear. So let's get on to how I know. Yep, awesome. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I suppose the short answer is I know who I am because I remember my life 
in the first century and in the spirit world, I remember who I am in that, in, because I remember events and relationships and things that happened. So in that way, I know. Mm. But I haven't always allowed that knowledge, I suppose, and we mentioned this briefly in the last question, because I have had a lot of... I have actually suppressed a lot of my emotions and my emotional experience since I reincarnated back in 1979. I've actively tried to suppress some, well, a lot of my memories and emotions because they confronted fears within me, some of the fears that we just spoke about, yeah. but also the feeling of feeling confused about why I have memories that are not related to the life that I was involved in living. Um, so when I first met AJ, and we talked a little bit late, uh, earlier about um, how, how that happened, in that I met him at my parents' home, and eventually they said to me that uh, he felt that we were soulmates, and I had this really strange reaction, or as strange as I felt it was strange then, of just saying, I knew it straight away <laughs> and um, that really shocked me in a lot of ways because I did feel that I knew it right then yeah. uh, and I did a lot of um, emotional or psychological reasoning to try to get myself back from that point but in a way I, in that moment I, I understood what I'd always kind of felt but I didn't know why I felt it. It's very difficult to explain yeah. um, because yeah. it, from that moment on when my parents told me what AJ felt about me, I didn't actually make any contact with AJ for a number of months um, and I just sat with this thing and I kept going, oh, it's not a big deal, whatever, some guy thinks that you're soulmates. You know, I, other people had said to me before in spiritual circles, like, oh, wow, you have an amazing energy or, you know, oh, wow. You, and I just was like, oh, whatever. You know, <laughs> sometimes I felt like the guys were a bit sleazy, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> um, and this guy wasn't sleazy. He wasn't pursuing me. He hadn't told me anything. And I didn't really, I could you know, there, I couldn't see any reason why I was giving this so much time yeah. and thought inside of myself. Because I was staying at my parents' house and I was between jobs, I just found myself sitting in their garden, just in this process that wasn't even really thinking. It was just sort of feeling strange. feeling, <laughs> But it was a feeling of like, hey, pay attention. Pay attention. You know about this. And then my mind would kick in and go, no, I don't. What are you doing? You know, it was this very strange thing that was happening to me. And I knew after, after some weeks that I wasn't going to be able to let this go. Like I, and I kind of have that nature where I think if there's something that I need to find out, I'm going to, find, I'm going to investigate it and resolve it because I have this sort of... I don't know if it's a need to know, but it's a need to resolve things. You know, can't leave them hanging or just, just you know, push it to one side. <clears throat> Once I'm peaked on something, I've got to sort it out. <laughs> and so, and so, I've been going through this process where I was, I was, just, it was such a strange thing that I couldn't even really. I wasn't really distressed at that point. I just had, I just felt like I needed to give attention to this thing and then I kept going, what is the thing you need to give attention to? And it, it just kind of got circular until this point where I said, right, I'm contacting this guy and I'm just asking him, what is this all about? And, and so began our email exchange and that's how we started to get to know each other via email. Sometime after that, I joined AJ on an overseas trip and I began to just talk to get to know him uh, still and during that time I started to experience memories. Now that sounds like I'd never had any before but it's not true. What I, what I came to understand when I was having, because now I had a framework for what was actually going on, I was having these emotional experiences and because there was now an allowance of a new mm. possibility inside of me, I understood it more. 
And once that started to happen, I understood that this has been happening all my life. I just didn't understand what it all meant. That I'd had intense emotional experiences that seemed to be attached to things that hadn't happened before, but I shut them down really rapidly because I, I thought, well, that's not true or that doesn't exist. There was no context for me to put that emotion into and I didn't have any sense that feeling emotions would would help them leave you yeah. and understand that. And so I thought, well, I'm having a, an atten intense sadness that doesn't seem to belong anywhere and I don't really like that experience, so I'm going to shut it down. So that had happened at various times throughout my life before I met AJ. Now meeting him, I began to just entertain the idea that this was memories and that just brought a lot of things into clarity for me. And so then I began to have a real sense, well, I know who I am because I remember who I am. And it was more than that probably, hello. It was also a feeling of, the best way I can describe it is like coming home to a sense that I'd had in childhood but I, I'd suppressed. So you kind of, just to re, so you kind of knew who you were as a child in a sense that you'd had some glimpses or feelings of who you really were as a kid. But yeah. shut everything down as you got yeah. older and then get to this point and go, oh wow, I kind of remember her. Yes. Kind of thing. Yeah, 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 a lot like that. Um, and Sorry. yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. That's, that's really exactly what it was like. And it was sort of felt like a homecoming in, in it. But then I still had all these other, like, oh, my gosh, what's the world going to think about all of this? Which would then throw me into, I don't want the homecoming. I actually want to deny it again. And I, yeah. I cycled through this for, for years, really. But, I, but in answer to the question, which is really how I know who I am, it's about, it's about the memories that I, that I have, but also the sense of knowledge of that have always known that I'm someone other than just Mary Luck or that I'm other than Mary, that I have awarenesses and knowledge that didn't, didn't come from this experience. Uh, and, you know, it's even confronting for me to say that out loud because it feel, I feel like, oh, wow, I'm still working through that thing of how everyone's going to perceive that, but that's the truth. Yeah. And, and probably the other thing I would like to say about that and being Mary Magdalene and knowing that I'm Mary Magdalene. Through all of this, I've never had a strong attachment to the way that the world perceives Mary Magdalene. It, um, that, in that I don't feel like I'm filling the role or the identity that the world perceives Mary Magdalene to be. I feel like I have an experience and a life and the name that I had was Mary Magdalene. Right. I don't know how I can explain that better. Whereas everyone's kind of, everyone's got this idea of who Mary Magdalene is. So they've yeah. created Mary Magdalene. Yes. And you, that's you, not me. That's not you. And I don't feel like I'm <clears throat> coming to claim who they think created. that is. That person's not real. Yeah. I'm real and I'm Mary Magdalene, but I'm not, it, I don't feel like, um, I have special importance. It's just who I am. I don't feel like, um, yeah, that I'm somehow more significant or have more that special about me because of this is who I am. Like, I just have a memory of being a kid and growing up and stuff happening and getting married and having kids of my own and passing into the spirit world and, you know, being with my soulmate and doing doing things we love, teaching divine truth and um, sharing a life together. And now we're still doing that. And we very much want to talk to the world about divine truth and to help people to grow in love and towards God. But I don't have a sense that um, I'm here to stake a claim on everyone else's. I don't want glory. I don't want... And I don't really relate to... Um, the way the world sees Jesus and Mary Magdalene, because that's yeah. not who we are. That's not how we have lived. And so I don't have a sense that I'm, that I'm here to, I don't know, steal some thunder or glory or something like that, which I th think a lot of people believe about us. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, knowing you, I don't think you're much like the stories <laughs> I've heard of Mary Magdalene, <laughs> personally. Yeah. <laughs> and the same with Jesus, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but did we answer the question well? That's important. Um, um, how I know. Yeah. So I know because of my memories. I also know because I have this deep sense of knowing not that I'm Mary Magdalene as the world depicts it, yes. but, but that, I, mm. that I have lived this life in the spirit world and I have had this relationship with God that's enabled me to come back here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, on another topic, I'd really like to, like the, sen the senses that you have, I'd be pretty interested in talking to you about as well. Yeah, sure. It's pretty difficult to describe. Yeah, that's yeah. what I feel. <laughs> so, so <laughs> just, we'll just put it out there. Cool. Um, I think, right. Yeah, I think you answered it pretty well. Probably the the final thing I would say about that is that also I don't have some sense of martyrdom about it or that I have to take up this role. Like, I don't feel I have to take up the role in any role. <laughs> I just have to be myself. And I don't feel like, oh, this is a hardship I'm going to have to endure. Yeah. Although sometimes I'm felt through or am feeling through certain emotions, I don't feel like I'm doing the world a big favour or that, um, you know, that it's... I don't feel like I have an investment in this being true yeah. in any sense. But I've really searched for... <laughs> I've, I've really done my homework on trying to figure out how this can't be true. <laughs> my biggest fear has always been that, oh, I'm really going to have to give up this struggle within myself and just accept that this is me. And I feel uh, that's where I've come to more recently. I've always be known that it's me. I've mm. always, but I've fought it tooth and nail. And I've tried to look for other reasons for the experience and the senses and the, the feeling that I have because it's felt pretty scary and confronting. <laughs>